I'll begin this afternoon session with a brief introduction. Welcome to the Canadian Institute of Forestry's National Electronic Lecture Program. My name is Sharon Young, and I will be hosting today's session. Today is Wednesday, February 21st, 2024, and this is the third session in the e-lecture series entitled Sharing Knowledge on Some Key Initiatives Happening Across Canadian Forest Service. The series is brought to you by the Canadian Forest Service and Canadian Wood Fiber Centre. The CIF IFC is very pleased to collaborate and host these webinars. Today's session is titled Update on NRCAN's Progress Toward the Digitalization of the Forestry Sector. Today we have Ron Martin Lassayer. He is a member of the Canadian Wood Fiber Centre, a research centre of Natural Resource Canada, whose work aims to improve the competitiveness of the Canadian forest sector. Over the past 20 years, Mr. Lassier's research work was centered on the development of partial cutting systems adapted to hardwood, mixed wood, and softwood stands. More recently, his focus is on the development of solutions to accelerate the digitalization of the forestry sector for the optimization of the timber and bioenergy supply. With that, I will now pass it over to Jean Martin. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, I went first to uh, acknowledge uh, that my colleague, Ibmoulud, is not there with us today. Uh, unfortunately, he's, uh, he's sick today. So uh, uh, I'll make sure uh, he's my accomplice in that work. Uh, Moulud is a researcher and, and manager at Canmet Energy at Varennes, uh, a research center that is specialized into um, energy efficiency and de decarbonization uh, for, for Canadians. So uh, without further ado, I'll start with my presentation. Let's go. Uh, give me a second. Share screen. Voila. Here, can I go on presentation mode? Is it good? Uh, you may have to swap the screen. Okay. How about this one? Looks good now. That's good. Okay, update on NRCAN's progress toward the digitalization of the forestry sector. So uh, my st uh, start, the storyline is, well, we started with digitalization 101. What is it? What's for? And I'll talk about uh, what's the NRCAN research initiative on that subject. And uh, I'll start with the new Brunswick pilot project we started in 2020, uh, going through a roadmap of digital transformation we started with New Brunswick. And from this, three projects were started and uh, some, of them, some of them were finished, uh, one on forecasting yields with harvester data, the second one optimization of forest transportation, the last one is the precision of Quebec's forest inventory, and then I'll pursue with the Quebec pilot project that it was started last year, 2023, and the next step. So let's start. So digitalization, what is it? What for? Uh, just to make sure we're talking all about the same thing. So. Digitalization, there's many definition, and one I like is using data and digital technologies to transform business operations and create value. So uh, in other words, it's the use of data generated by industrial processes and the environment to improve operational decisions, simplify work, and automate certain tasks. Um, when you, you take digitalization as a whole, you can see, uh, can I point something? I'll try to use a pointer. Uh, can you see my mouse? Sure, good, excellent. So it includes automation and robo the robotics. That's probably the most, I would say, impressive part of digitalization. But the other part of it is, part of it is the sensors and connected objects that are collecting data um, every day, every minute on, on, on industrial processes and the environment. And this goes into a big data management that is the infrastructure to make everything possible. And then there's the use of this data beside automation and robotics, uh, which, we, which we could call the digital intelligence. And it includes 
descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. I'll go a little bit further there. And in forestry, already uh, in the industrial sector, we've got some really good advances. Uh, for example, if I can have, what's going on here? Okay, but um, that's uh, that's the scanner that you can find in, in uh, typically in, in sawmills in Eastern Canada. And these uh, uh, has been going on uh, since a while. Those these scanners are very good example of digitalization in the uh, forestry sector. So these tools are measuring every log going in the, going in the sawmill, and you've got a piece of software to optimize the uh, the uh, the sawmilling pattern for each logs uh, according to this. So this is a good example of robot robotics uh, using digitalization approaches. Let's see a little bit deeper about digital intelligence. So uh, I, I like very much this figure from Evado. That's a research group in Montreal. So uh, the descriptive analytics is understand the phenomenon, understand the processes that are going on with, with your data. So commonly called business intelligence. So it's uh, causal analytics, uh, relationships, um, multivariate analysis, that kind of stuff. And their second steps, and the second step is predictive analysis, trying to make forecasts using this data. And we're using mostly machine learning. Regression is part of it, but uh, there's also other more advanced uh, machine learning or deep learning approaches. Um, and finally, what we can do with this data is pre uh, prescriptive analytics is making decisions, automatic decisions. Uh, the, the, the fund, foundation of that is operational research, optimization, mathematical optimization, but also other approaches that are going to be becoming more and more popular, like reinforcement learning that is more related to um, to uh, and, uh, artificial intelligence. So on one side, you've got data science. On the other side, you've got artificial intelligence. And what does it mean for forestry? Well, I'll give an example here uh, using harvester head data and uh, in uh, the planning of harvest and forest operations. So um, for instance, uh, descriptive and analytics would be using data from the harvester machines and create dashboards so we can monitor real time what's going on in the field machine per machine, uh, shift by shift and see what is the, the performance of each, what are the, uh, do they reach their targets in terms of production and, pro and productivity, et cetera, et cetera. That, these are the low hanging fruits that is, uh, the, the descriptive analytics. Um, further, furthermore, we could use the same data and make some some uh, forecasts or predictions about what's the what will be the yields and productivity for the next cut blocks based on the historic data, historical data we've got from from former operations. That's the other aspect. Using machine learning, we can do that. And finally, we could um, we could program or develop automated work schedule scheduling. Uh, based on based on, on on this information, we could generate uh, or, your, or make tools that could generate these schedule automatically instead of being done by hand. So, um, this is a, a concept from my 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 colleague Maloud, uh showing what uh, if we uh, if we uh, take a model that is common to the industry, I would say industry at, at general. You've got a value chain, a physical value chain, who's got sensors that are, have a, a, a GIS, LIDAR, weather information, and economic data and statistics, et cetera, et cetera. And this data can be integrated and fused into large databases and tools to make cross, uh, crossing information together. And these information can, can then be used for, for um, digital twins. So meaning uh, digital twins are just like representation of reality, models of the reality that we could um, uh, follow that parallels the real life. And we can question, query these uh, digital twins, and then these digital twins can also be used for, for what if scenarios. So instead of playing with the real stuff and making uh, trial and errors, we can do these trials and errors with, with these models, with these digital twins. Optitech is one example in the forestry sector, or the sawmill sector. Optitech is a sawmill simulator. And then you can design a whole new sawmill with components of this digital twin. So simulation, physical, mathematical models, 
You can make cause effect analysis, data mining, optimization. And it's really something that is not only for research, it's really for, for piloting operation. This digital twin can be used for asset management, supervision and control, uh, supervision of control systems, planning, scheduling, and also process and product design. So, uh, of course, uh, when you're talking about force operation, we're not really in that realm. But in your in pulp and parent industry or in, in biochemical industries, well, these digital twins can be used for making virtual experiments and accelerate the development of new products. So what are the opportunities for the forest, forest sector? Um, I'm talking about we're trying to, to think uh, as a whole value chain from the production of trees down to the sell, the, the selling to the market and to supplying the, 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 the customers with it. But of course, we've got our own biases, like I'm fond for the Canadian Wood Fiber Center, I'm more versed into wood production and, and supply, while my friend Maloud is more interested into the, uh, the, the uh, transformation of wood and the delivery to the markets. Um, so what are the, uh, the approaches, what are the challenges, the current challenges overall? Well, uh, let's see, well, we've got labor shortages and that's not a temporary stuff. Uh, we've got uncertainty on supply uh, everywhere in the country. So this is increasing pressure on everybody. Uh, lack of agility, we've got very, sometimes very rigid systems. And when things are changing, like large fires, where our ability to adapt is, is putting on dire straits. Um, we've got increasing environmental and market constraints. Climate change is one thing, but market constraints, like uh, if, if we've got, um, uh, shortages or, or varying demands that are putting some, some stress on the, on the system. So what are the benefits of, of the uh, of digitalization? Well, first, uh, we're trying to reduce the workload. Addressing directly the labor short, shortage question, we're not trying to, to put people uh, out of the company. We're just making trying to make the business still viable with less people. Uh, better visibility of operations across the value chain. Visibility is key to make a big, to make uh, to be agile. Uh, we're we're trying to uh, produce timely forecasts and precise forecasts so we can have better decision for the next step and uh, better coordination through the inform through information across the value chain. So that's key uh, to have a more agile overall systems to have a client customer relationship all across the value chain that is open and collaborative based on, on information and data. So these are the promises of digitalization for the, for the forest value chain. Let's see in the, in the future if we are going to achieve this. This is on a nutshell, like a very circle, I would perfect nutshell, the, uh, I would say the initiative of uh, NRCAN on digitalization of forest value chains. So the first thing is the original part of it is uh, it's a partnership between re two research centers, the fire the fiber center, which is uh, uh, in the, from the Canadian Forest Service, and Canmet Energy, which is a sister organization, a, re a research facility about energy in Varennes. And because these guys are very good into optimization, digital intelligence, into the industrial transformation, and now they're interested to join us to more on the supply and production aspect of it. And we've got a very nice fit here. Together, our program is a research program based on, on digital, uh, digital intelligence. So it's data all around data, production and management, analytics, forecast, and optimization. So we're not into the realm of, of robotics uh, or, or uh, I would say all the IT, uh, the IT stuff. We're more at the 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 the, uh, the, the other end, the the uh, of the the, the the other end of the uh, of the utilization of the data mostly. And who are our partners? Well, industry definitely. We're we're doing a practical, or we 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 are doing um, applied research. So industry, governments, the, the provincial governments are, are a very important part of the forest supply chain in forestry. Uh, suppliers in terms of equipment and, and solutions, they're part of the of the ecosystem too. Academia for sure. Uh, researchers from uh, right now, we've got very nice collaboration with FARAC and at Université Laval, but also with other professors. And uh, FP Innovation for sure. So, uh, which is already uh, a major uh, institution 
around digitalization in Canada. And what are our priorities? Well, predictability is one, agility is another one, coordination, um, decarbonization, that's a federal objective. That's a, a, that's a, a really clear objective for CANMETH. Also bioeconomy, supporting the bio, emerging bioeconomies and sustainability and workforce, like helping the workforce go through the changes we are, we're facing. So we started this brand new adventure. We discussion started in, 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 uh, in 2019 and in 2020, we started uh, what we call the new, uh, new Brunswick Pilot Project. So our scope is to deliver a, a research program that is for uh, that is applies across Canada. So uh, for 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 forest to forest sector, but we prefer to start crawling uh, before walking, walking before running. So our first crawling for effort was with New Brunswick. Um, and so we started there. We started with a workshop in uh, 2020. We had 40 participants for first companies, governments, also um, financial uh, groups that were supporting financial, providing services, uh, financial support. And we've got uh, invited experts, Paul Stewart, Michael Ronfis, and Emily Itonen from Finland to help us to think and understand what are the um, the, the opportunities uh, given from digitalization existing in the one that had to, to be developed. And uh, um, I must admit it was a tough a tough sell because uh, uh, trying to get a common understanding of what it, that meant uh, was a challenge. But after two days, we finally agreed and have a common understanding on the direction. Um, and one nice thing that came through after this workshop, uh, a work that was leaded by my colleague Adam Dick, was to uh, get the industry and government together and agree and, and make a mapping of what, of what are the priorities, what are the, the uh, pitching problems and, and priorities in terms of development R and D we could address in terms of. Uh, of uh, for a digitalization and um, of course you can't not see all the details but that's a matrix at the priority ma matrix uh, sorry it's a little bit it's bad angle so on the bottom you've got the the ease to implement the stuff the solution and on the vertical axis you've got the return on investment or the impact and we're looking for the uh, the stuff with high impact and high facility so these are the, the uh, oh sorry here are the low hanging fruits. And we identified um, two, two urging priorities. The first one was utilization rate, the utilization rate of harvesting machines and related to that the utilization of harvester data. And the one, the other one was the optimization of wood transportation. So this this for us was uh, directions for, for uh, putting our, our, our uh, time and money in terms of research. And we started two projects. So the results was, an analysis of innovation and research needs, and um, two research projects, projects, one on forecasting harvest yields using harvested data, and the other one was timber transportation, optimization, and coordination. So I'll talk with about the first one. So uh, timber transportation and optimization coordination. Uh, this is from my colleague, uh, Francois Aubé, a researcher from CanMet working on this one. So uh, the, the target is to have an efficient uh, management of wood transport from forest to processing plant and, and between plants, uh, minimizing transportation costs, optimizing the use of resources, drivers, vehicle, and fuel, reduce the environmental, environmental impact, namely the fuel consumption, and uh, to have something that is predictable, at least reliable, reliable over time. Um, and the solution is a prototype optimization software that would, uh, based on uh, advanced optimization methods, that would provide a weekly or monthly uh, routing and scheduling solution, uh, something that is dynamic, that could be updated quickly depending on changing conditions of operation, based on collaborate or collaboration, because uh, in reality, we're dealing with many forest companies and many, I would say, trucking companies. Uh, of different sizes, mostly small, uh, sm very small companies. And so we have to find a way to collaborate. We cannot dictate what we want. And uh, also the application of machine learning to predict key variables. 
So uh, the main challenge here is to provide a feasible solution with the existing business environment. Uh, because uh, this question of forced transportation optimiza optimization has been tackled in the past by many researchers in Canada and Sweden. And um, they, they showed substantial potential savings, but how are the solutions were hard to deploy with the current business environment and stakeholders. Basically, or the, something was missing in between the mathematical model and the business environment where it, it we be, needed to be implemented. And uh, we're, we're, we're questioning researchers that, 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 that did this type of research and they're consistently saying the same thing. We're missing something here we have to address um, to make this, this, this solution applicable and in, in, uh, activate these potential savings. So Francois is working hard right now, trying just to, to scope the problem properly. Uh, the mathematical stuff is is the easiest part, trying to understand how this needs to be implemented at first. That's probably next the next step we have to do. Forecasting harvest yield uh, with harvested data. Well, um, this is based on, on, on the, I would say the ongoing development of the, the data system around harvesters. As, you, as probably you know, these machines are incredible because they're measuring every single tree that are cut. They're measured every 10 centimeters along the bowl, the diameter is measured to guide the, the, the bucking. And so you've got a, 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 a vast amount of data there about trees and, and stands, and every tree and stand is, is, is cut and measured in that way. We have no comparable methods in the field doing the same thing. Uh, so, uh, how can we tap on this information? That, that that's one piece of information. Location of the machine is another one. Timestamps is another one. Um, we've got an, a bunch of others, but I'll concentrate on the dendrometric stuff around the machine. So, if we start with uh, the system, we've got calibrators. Uh, the you need well calibrated sensors on the machine on the machine head to measure the diameter and length of the trees. I won't go into detail here, but. Uh, and you've got an onboard computer and software for data collection and uh, translate this in performance dashboards and maps and automatic bucking. And uh, I've put in green some example of, of existing software for different suppliers. And this is the relationship between the machine and the operator. And then you've got a communication system that push the, for the data from the machines on a regular basis. It can be either cellular, that's the case in, in, the, in the Scandinavian countries, uh, can be USB keys. That's a pain in the ass trying to work with that. But uh, another application is, is smartphone apps. And what's becoming a really nice uh, solution is uh, satellite phones uh, using the Starlink system. That's the one that the new kid in the block that is under, I would say, spreading in the boreal forest right now. That's very convenient and and reasonable price, reasonably priced. Um, and so this data is pushed into uh, harvest data warehouses. We, we got quality control, encryption, storage, sharing protocols. Uh, you've got some um, some examples: the uh, Trimble, Wood Force, Wood Force, Interpine Sticks, Biometria. These are suppliers of these services of collecting the data from numerous machines every day and make sure everything's in order. And then these data, this data can be flowed down to planning and monitoring softwares. You've got performance dashboards again, maps, harvest scheduling, transport scheduling, maintenance. You've got other for entrepreneur, uh, would say harvest entrepreneurs, also manufacturers that could provide, I would say, maintenance services based on telemetry. Um, John Deere is very keen on this one. And you can have managers that could use uh, FP Suite, S3 ArcMap, or other piece of software to to manage their the their fleet or manage the fluid that would flow based on, on this information. And of course, the, the, the last part, very important, are, are business models and standards. So standards for data, when, and we're good having a stand for the data for the harvested data. That Thank you for the Nordic countries of setting this data. So you can play with, with data from multiple machines with multiple different colors. Blue machines can have data that are compatible with yellow machines and, and, and red machines. Um, otherwise, it's a real nightmare to uh, to work with standards that are, that are not standards. So um, my research question is, can we predict the basket of product for the next cut block using the data from the former cut blocks 
uh, from the, the harvester data, the harvester head, and uh, using uh, all the remote sensing data we've got already. So uh, using harvester, uh, fusing harvester data, species, uh, species from photo interpretation, LIDAR canopy height models, and uh, Sentinel-2 multispectral signals uh, as input, as predictors, um, can we put this in a machine learning uh, process? Um, basically, it's building regressions, but instead of, uh, of uh, I would say, uh, classical regression, it's using random forest, KNN, or uh, uh, XGBoost, that is another learner here. And we're, we're, um, we're comparing the performance of the three and uh, make it short here. We want to make predictions about the volume, by volume per hectare per sorts the number of logs and the log size distribution in terms of an average volume and the standard deviation of volume. But it can be also like diameters, lengths, whatsoever. Uh, that's, the, that's the great thing about these harvester. They've got the data on all logs, all trees. So, and that's the, something that's pretty unique. You don't, you don't have, don't, you're not using models to, to get the log sorts. You have a real data here around here. So here are the results. Uh, so these are the results in terms of R square uh, for volume per volume search, sorts for all species, hardwoods and spruce fine per. Uh, this has this project has been done in collaboration in New Brunswick with the large forest companies. 80 machines were were connected. Uh, uh, in this case, 60 machines were connected for over a year. So we've got um, a hell lot of data here on a certain number of blocks. I don't recall the number of blocks, sorry. Uh, I forgot to take this in note, but it was many hundreds. Um, so uh, each bar is representing the R square for one solution. So we've got three solutions, Random Forest, KNN, XGBoost. KNN is the one that is used, uh, Random Forest is the one used for the AFI in New Brunswick. KNN is the one used for the Forest Inventory in Quebec. SG Boost is another common one, just to uh, very popular in, in the machine learning environment. So we can see here that uh, if we compare for each type of volumes, uh, first we see that random forest outperforms the two other methods in general. If we use only one, uh, one learner, uh, one method, and we've got very good prediction for uh, SPF studwood and saw log volumes and hardwood. So these are like very good, over sixty, uh, over seventy percent in some cases. Uh, 75, sorry, um, over 70%. So that's pretty good. Um, on the other side, we've got poor predictions for pulpwood and waste volumes and uh, Barry Cochet that goes, uh, that impacts also the total volume that has this in it. And our hypothesis is that probably uh, the fault is on our side. We probably have to, uh, to improve the way we classify the products. Um, that's one issue that the operators are, are, are putting tags on them. The tags are not homogeneous. So we have to figure out ourselves what are the products and probably there's something missing here and we've got uh, some solution to improve this. So stay tuned for the next version of this model. Probably this should improve here. But overall, we've got a very good prediction for, for hardwood volume, studwood and saw log. Um, so that's our that was our first experiment, first result that will be built, published shortly. That was very encouraging. Um, when we compare with the EFI results, uh, it was pretty pretty good. Um, so sorry, here are the, um, the 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 resume or summary of what what I was saying. Uh, the second experiment, I, I got the chance of working with colleagues from Canmet. Uh, Mohamed Efnawi and uh, Ahmed Hagab, and these two guys are are wizards of uh, of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And Mohamed uh, proposed to make some advances and try new uh, new approaches just to improve. See, with the same data, can we improve the predictions? So um, we took the same the same group of predictors, we added also EFI predictions. So what's the predictions from the inventory, the volumes and in, 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 in all volumes, diameter and basal area that every product from EFI has a input for a model. And we also added the, nor the local climatic normals uh, to, to this. And um, we made a feature selection. And more or less, we've got like here, we've got hundreds of variables. Uh, the feature selection made the selection of the most important ones 
prior to the calibration of the model. And in the, instead of using uh, KNN random forest whatsoever, we use an ensemble machine learning. So instead of choosing which is the best one, we're just calibrating every model, well, not every model, but a bunch of models all together. And we're making a single prediction, averaging or weighting the predictions of each model. Some, some models are better in some conditions, others are better on other conditions. So instead of achieving one, let's take it, let's take it all and make a weighted prediction. And we're assuming that would provide us, would provide a better solution than the, than the single learner applied to the same thing. So let's see here. Um, the results, it's a little bit, a little bit complicated, sorry. So in blue, you've got the same results from the semi, from the first experiment. And then we've got, um, let's use our predictors, uh, predictor uh, set one, random forest, K and N, XG boost. And then we've got the ensemble learning for all the other colors. And then, and we change for, uh, we've made some sub experiments uh, with different predictor sets. So predictor set, so the first one in blue, you can see here, it's a Fortran threaded for species, Sentinel-2 LiDAR, that was the, 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 the our baseline. And the group two, we use everything but LiDAR in EFI saying, well, can we, can we, uh, do we need to pay LiDAR? So that was a question. Can we do a, a decent stuff without paying for LiDAR? And the uh, third one was incorporating LiDAR, 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 and the fourth one was directly using the EFI prediction derived from LiDAR. Um, and that's one thing that these are colors and the U, or I would say the, the, uh, the intensity of the color, when it's pale is without feature selection, when it's yellow, it's, it, it is with uh, with uh, uh, feature selection, and uh, I pointed and read the best methods for each of the uh, each of the, uh, the the products here. Um, it's a mouthful of results. Um, believe me, uh, please believe me. Uh, these are the um, the the conclusion we can draw from this. Well, generally, ensemble machine learning improves prediction over a single learner, and that's a consistent with other results in other domains. Ensemble, it requires more computing power, but definitely more robust and more consistent than using a single uh, single solution, especially when you've got many variables to predict like this one. Uh, we've got a viral performance or feature selection. Sometimes it improves through things, something it doesn't. Um, and this one, well, I have to question Mohamed. I don't clearly understand this one. I'm not special here, but definitely at the end, uh, there's no clear benefit or feature selection. And finally, uh, LiDAR OEFI have a significant contribution. So uh, if we don't have LiDAR OEFI, we'll probably have to, um, to, uh, to accept lower precisions of our forum inventory. That's not new. We already knew that from EFI in New Brunswick and Ontario. In Quebec. Um, last project that wasn't part of the New Brunswick, uh, I would say, scope is that's an opportunity we had uh, in between. So, uh, like many provinces, uh, uh, the methodologies for force inventory greatly evolved over the last decade, mainly by the advent of aerial lidar and utilization of advanced statistical methods, and. Um, the goal here was to provide is to provide a more precise force inventory to support the planning of force operations. So sufficiently to to uh, get rid of getting more more I would say like uh, timber uh, timber cruises information uh, is not we're hoping not to be um, not to have to 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 make these timber crews for instance and just rely on on uh, force inventory from remote sensing. Um, therefore, the forest planners want to know how accurate is the new provincial forest inventories in comparison with the former one. So we've done this uh, project in collaboration with the province of Quebec. Um, we've worked with, uh, in the haute Laurentide region, that's a, a region north, uh, like northwest of Montreal. It's a region that is dominated by tolerant hardwoods and mixed woods. And uh, we've got seven species groups, so it's, it's a complex forest comparison to the Boro one. And we were fortunate of having in hand like a, a 41,000 control plots in 400, 200, uh, 400, uh, 400 cut blocks. Uh, these plots were taken 
uh, about the same time, uh, a little bit le uh, around the same the, the same time as the force inventory. So we were able to compare the volumes that were measured in these plots with the prediction for inventory. And uh, the figure uh, just below, we're comparing each point is uh, is a cod block. So for each cod block, we've got uh, on you've got on on the bottom axis the predicted volume for spruce pine fir, and on the y axis you've got the measure ones. And uh, if everything's perfect, like we everything should line up with the one one line here, the red one. But we can see here that uh, we've got some biases, especially on the the higher end of the volumes with the fourth inventory program that was delivered in 2008. And this was a classical force inventory doing aerial photos and uh, averages of plots per, per strata as an estimation. So it's it's design-based uh, inventory. And we compare with the latest inventory that was delivered in 2022. Uh, the, 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 the photos and, and plots were taken in 20, 2018, the same region. So And this was with aerial photo and LIDAR and involves K-N modeling instead of averages. And so it's a model-based inventory. And we can see here for Spruce Pine Fur a great deal of improvement in terms of, of quality and prediction. So we've got a reduced bias. Look, the first one was really biased here in average. You've got very strong differences between predicted prediction and measured values. And the mean area error, so it's uh, the, the mean um, the mean error here, it's uh, it's 32% uh, and improved reduced to 16%. So this is very uh, a very, very good result for SPF. It's probably the best one across all the species group. The other species group also shows improvement or status quo, um, but uh, this one is definitely shows an improvement over, uh, and this is a, a result that is, uh, we don't find very much in literature comparison such uh, or, or with the validation of entry with independent data. So uh, that was in in, 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 in conclusion, the, the managers from this area decided that for all the, the, um, the harvesting involving, um, I would say uh, clear cuts or close to clear cuts operations or, or careful logging around advanced regeneration, well, they just they can they could rely only on the force inventory you have to fulfill the lead in, in terms of information. They don't need these, I would say, operation plots uh, in the field. Um, challenge is that there's a big deal of partial cuts that are done uh, in hardwoods, uh, irregular shelter woods, or selection cutting systems, and the inventory right now is not sufficient to provide information needed to to drive or to, to plan and, uh, and and monitor these operations. So. Uh, partial win here. Um, I, I'm getting to the end of the minute. So this was, these were my, our our short short term victories um, uh, over the last three years, and now we're in the Quebec pilot project. So uh, our first vision was let's start with New Brunswick and then Quebec, and then move westward uh, against the wind, and. Um, so the next steps uh, after Quebec, we're hoping to, to, to expand to either Ontario or directly to BC. We'll see. Uh, we're not there yet, but the idea is to expand. And um, on the Quebec project pilot, the same process, we started a conversation with the, uh, with the stakeholders, industry, government. Quebec government is a little bit has a different role. It's much deeper, deeply involved into the planning process than other jurisdictions. So. Uh, it's it's very important to have them on board, and so we started with uh, in spring 2022 with a workshop on digital management uh, in in Quebec's forestry value chain. We started with a workshop in in person workshop. It was uh, uh, we had a little window between the pandemic, and um, uh, we had a. a the objective of the workshop was to bring together key players in the Quebec forestry industry sector to discuss priority issues and action, and to con construct collaborative initiatives to accelerate the digital transformation. So uh, during this workshop, it's participants identified four key barriers to digital, digital, digitalization, uh, human resource and government's constraints, lack of collaboration, need for, for performance optimization, and cyber, cyber security concerns. Um, afterward, after that, an advisory committee was has been formed to pursue discussions. 
Uh, this group uh, had a field tour uh, last fall and uh, followed by the working sessions to examine and, pro examine and prioritize research question. And this process is still going, ongoing, so I cannot deliver any results right now, but it's pretty promising right now. So slow and steady, we're going through this. Um, what, what are the next steps? Uh, well, Consult, uh, I'll, I'll talk short term here with, uh, within the next three, two, two years. Uh, consultation, consultation of Quebec stakeholders is still ongoing. Uh, that This includes also um, a very nice conversation with F Innovation for collaboration and also for RAC, which is a very large research group at Laval University, uh, uh, well established. Uh, they're working on the optimization of forest value chain since, since 20 years now. Um, so building collaboration with them to accelerate our the research program for everyone. Um, and we're pursue on research aspect, the forecast of harvester yields, uh, the phase two of the project. Uh, we made a, a proof of concept in the phase one. Phase two is to uh, first uh, uh, develop an incremental learning uh, approach where you can improve the model with continuous feed of new data because the data, the machine data are, are continuously going in. Um, uh, we have a, comp kind of a, a continuous flow of data. Uh, how can we improve the model instead of having a stage approach? That's uh, one research one to do to, to pursue. The other one is how do we implement these models into the operational planning processes? Uh, right now, we, the tools and approaches we have are not ready for that. So we, we're going to work closely with the force and with the the, the um, partners force in, industry to to work out how do we once we've got a model that is calibrated how do we transfer it and make it usable for the day to day job for our forest planners. Um, we've got a new project on precision harvester data. A lot of questions about what's the precision, what's in that. Uh, uh, it relates to the machines relates to the environment, but it's also mostly relates to the, I would say, um, practices, but good practices from the operator and and the his supervisor uh, to, to make sure the quality of data is there. So we're going to make an, an analysis on this one this year. And the last one is the optimization, uh, the, the uh, coordination optimization of transfer is still ongoing with Francois, um, saying that this project also has its hiccups. It's not, it's not very easy. Uh, the collaboration, uh, not not collaboration. I would say sometimes discussion with with partners uh, uh, is is has varying degrees of, of intensity. I would say, and and getting the data is not easy. It's not well organized. Like most of the digitalization pro pro projects, getting the data and getting it organized takes a big time. Um, the last one that has been um, uh, added is uh, the digitization roadmaps. We're, we're pursuing this. We started in New Brunswick, pursuing in Quebec with different aspects. Uh, this pro this one is still needs to be scoped, but is part of the, I would say, portfolio for, for the next two years. And of course, uh, we'll move forward with new, uh, new pilot projects, in BC, Ontario. We'll see. Uh, it will depend, uh, but right now we've got a mouthful of projects to, to pursue for the next two years. So if you want to get in touch with one of us, so Mouloud, you've got the, the nice picture of Mouloud here. And also I've put Francois Aubé, who's not co-author of the presentation, but he's the one the re, uh, main researcher about the transportation question. So if you want to get in touch with one of us, you've got our emails here. Uh, Please feel free. Uh, we're we're happy to help and happy for look for uh, looking forward for collaboration. So this is thank you. Thank you, John Martin. That was a great presentation. And so now let's move on to the questions. While we're waiting for participants to finish typing their questions, let's take a moment to fill out the post webinar survey. So I'm just gonna launch them. Just a reminder that there are two questions. You may need to scroll down to see the next question.
All right. Uh, the first question is for you, Jean Martin. Um, yep. Do you think that most industry members are having to increase their digitalization or are they collecting data and requiring assistance to learn how to better use it? Please repeat the question. Sure. Uh, so the first question for you is, do you think that most industry members ha are having to increase their digitalization or are they collecting data and requiring assistance to learn how to better use it? Good question. Um, the answer is both. Some some companies are way in, uh, are in advance uh, in comparison to others. Um, the, mainly, they're the large companies in Eastern Canada, for what I know. Um, but there's a, it's not the majority. The majority of, of companies are still... Um, on the on the first stages of collecting data and getting 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 it organized, and that's not a, a, a simple task. And I know if innovation is trying hard to um, support companies, especially on the harvester head data, I would say, of course, I'm talking about I would say the upstream part of the for the value chain. If we're talking about into the mills, we're in different, totally different environment here, where the data is well organized, the digitalization stuff is already ongoing. Uh, once it's inside the mill and, and, and downstream, but upstream, uh, yes, uh, I would say the 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 need is uh, to support to gather organized information, getting getting stuff organized and collect. And again, we have to crawl, walk, and run. And uh, and in parallel, how do we use it? How do we we make value out of it? That's uh, that's where we're we're putting our energy. Thank you, Jean Martin. Uh, next question it's more like a comment it says new brunswick is missing from the list of choices adam what are you talking about <laughs> which choices are we talking about <laughs> the, survey. the survey okay oh okay i see i'll fix that it's probably my survey I'll fix that, Adam. Yeah, yeah. We're missing a big part of the crowd here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, all right. I think we answered all the questions. Uh, if there are no more questions coming up, we can close today's session. And thank you, everyone, for joining today's e-lectures. And I, see, I will see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much.